Hello everyone, I'm just heading back from the Phillip Island MotoGP weekend. It was amazing. I stayed at the track, got to meet some of the MotoGP riders and of course see all the action. So what I'll do is I'll run through the results and what that means for the championship. Feel free to skip to the parts that interest you. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Hi everyone, so welcome back to Andy Moto. We are headed down to Phillip Island today. Super excited. It's the first time that I will be going and it hasn't been here since 2019. So I'm super excited. Got all the essentials here, bread, some Red Bull, swag in the back. It has been like flooded the last couple of days. So hopefully we'll be able to find a camping spot. Um, they have closed off a lot, but I'm just kind of winging it. Yeah, there's a lot of Modis on the road already, so I'm super excited. I'll check back in when I get down there. Just at Phillip Island now, um, catching up on some MotoGP while I wait till my friend is finished. She's um, doing some marshalling, so we're going to get some tickets off her. Um, but until then, I'm just going to catch up on the MotoGP. On the factory Honda, down in cool. seventh place. The clouds were then looking pretty dark, so I did a bit of a botched job with the camp set up, but I just wanted to miss the rain. Saturday was beautiful weather and I headed over to the track and watched free practice three. I walked around the track to find where the best viewing spots were and got to watch the riders practice their starts and I absolutely loved the sound. And I also got to see a bit of action. So a Moto2 rider did have a bit of a stack. They were fine, the bike not so much. Then I really just had a look around the merch stores. So Jack Miller and even Remy Gardner had their own stalls. Honda had some Rebels there and you could buy riding gear and all sorts of accessories. And I even saw a live Mishman and got a photo with him. So I ended up in another section and I was pretty sure it was restricted, but the security there was a bit loose and I happened to see the Mick doing. But I was actually a typical fangirl and I didn't know what to do, so just kind of been a bit awkward. So after qualifying, I got some footage near the finish line to talk about qualifying, but I wasn't sure exactly where all the riders were because I watched it earlier and I couldn't quite see the big screen. So I had to check all the results on my phone when I got back to camp and then I was able to talk about it the next day. And also I saw people crowding around a tent and you wouldn't believe it. They were interviewing all the MotoGP riders. This is the first time I've actually seen a bit of Remy Gardner. He was pretty cute, very nervous, being in front of his home crowd. So it was really cool to see Jack and Peko up close. Jack was trying to teach Peko some of the Aussie slang. Bonks. 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 Flip flops. <laughs> what is the toilet? <laughs> the toilet was... Uh... That was pretty funny. And I was really surprised at how little Franco was. When I first started watching MotoGP, he and Fabio were riding really well. And Fabio, well, he's just, he's Fabio. I got so close to getting to Fabio and Marc Marquez to sign my booklet, but I was just that little bit too far from the front of the, the gate. Lucky though, I not only got a photo with both Enea Bastianini and Fabio DG Antonio, but I also got their signatures. How cool. <laughs> then I headed over to the Marshall barbecue dinner and on the way I got to go on the track when there was no one around besides the teams and the race officials. So that was pretty cool. But then I decided to call it a night before the rain hit. 
So I honestly thought the water would get in overnight, but my dodgy job, it held up quite well and managed to keep all the water out. So on race day, I got up and I cooked coffee and some hot dogs on my 360 burner. Not sponsored by the way, but they are great. And then I went over to the track to try and score a good spot. There was a Red Bull aerial display and Casey Stoner got driven around the track. So let's talk about the race. Qualifying set the stage for a really interesting race with three leading riders in the championship, all close on the grid. But it was Jorge Martin who was on pole after setting the fastest ever qualifying lap around Phillip Island. Marc Marquez was also back to his best with an epic save before qualifying second. Then there were the top three riders in the championship with Peko in third, Aleish Espargaro in fourth and Fabio Cotteraro in fifth. Miller also qualified fairly well in eighth and as usual there was only a few tenths of a second between the top 10 riders or so. So despite the result, Fabio started the race really strong going from fifth to third but then he made a mistake shortly after and lost about five seconds and then fell down to about 20th place. But a lap or two later he was the fastest rider on the circuit again and gained a few places but then he crashed out in the race and he lost his lead in the championship, which was a bit disappointing. I reckon he's such a good rider and his Yamaha isn't the fastest and he also doesn't have a heap of competitive Ducati teams who might be able to help him get points by not trying to overtake him when they probably could. So even though Fabio won the championship last year, he was still considered the underdog by most people and Peko the favorite for this year. Peko is now 14 points in front with only two races left and a possible maximum of 50 points up for grabs. Peko actually led the race for quite a few laps, but on the last lap he was overtaken by both Alex Rins and Marc Marquez. If it wasn't for this, he would have been 23 points up with two races to go. So Marquez and Rins not only rode amazing races, but they've helped keep the championship more interesting. So when I saw Marquez interviewed on Saturday, he said that he hopes to be able to fight for the championship next year. And seeing that he overtook Pekka on the soft tire on the last lap and got pole position in Japan a few weeks ago, it's looking like he could possibly do that. So Phillip Island was also Mark's 100th Premier Class podium. So that was pretty cool. And Rin showed that he's as good as anyone on his day by taking the win. And he's moving to LCR Honda next year. So that will be interesting just to see how he goes. So his current teammate, Joanne Mir, will be teammates with Mark Marquez next year. And although Mir looked like he could fight for the win during the practice, he finished well down the field. So the other big thing to happen was that Jack Miller was wiped out by Alex Marquez. So Jack started strong, coming in eighth on the grid to overtake Peko at one point, and the crowd was so disappointed when he fell out of the race. Alicia Spargaro actually had a pretty uneventful race, hovering around the sixth place early on and finishing in ninth. His teammate Maverick Vinales finished all the way down in 17th despite Phillip Island traditionally being a good track for him, and he seemed optimistic when he was asked on Saturday about his chances for the race. Other honorable mentions were the two Mooney VR46 Ducatis finishing in fourth and sixth with Marco Benzecchi getting awarded Rookie of the Year after that fourth place finish. Like usual, Anaya Bastianini had good late race pace, quickly moving in from 10th, then to seventh place, and then he finished in fifth. His teammate Fabio DG Antonio, however, was the last rider to complete the race, finishing in 20th. And Remy Garner was the last point scoring place, finishing in 15th in front of his home crowd. Once the race was finished, I got to walk the track for the podium presentation. I honestly cannot describe the atmosphere. There were so many people on the track and I got like some cool videos and some cool pictures. Overall, it was such a great weekend. I think everyone should try and watch MotoGP even if you only like cruises or even if you're not a rider. Qualifying and the race are the best bits to watch and it's on again in Malaysia in just a few days time. 
So please subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other videos and thank you for watching.